I came out here to learn wood boat construction, but a byproduct of that is that I've been living on the water for six years now, and it's been wonderful. It's, it's something that gets in your blood, I think, and being able to wake up and, and see the light and the tide and the wind on the water and know what the day might be like is, is really fantastic. When I first met Kaylee, she was extremely interested by alternative living and by tiny homes and different ideas like that. And I moved out west to learn about wooden boats. So this was the perfect thing. It's, it's basically a tiny home on the water, the, the way it's designed and the way we put it together. And it just seemed like something we had to do. They built these boats here in Victoria for Expo 86. Uh, my partner and I came across this boat and it had all these beautiful windows, but it was very derelict and quite neglected. We asked for the price and it was at $6,000 that they wanted for the boat. We made them an offer a little bit less than that. And we had the boat out at the marina for a year and a half out of the water. There was a lot of exterior work that had to be done. I replaced uh, about 10 or 15% of the hull. And then we came inside and gutted it back to the studs so that we could re-insulate, all new wiring, all new plumbing, and of course a whole new interior. And um, we did this project for ourselves, so we really put our heart and souls into it. Kaylee is a professional carpenter, and uh, I'm a boat builder, and it was a good union. We had the right skill set to get this job done. So I think all in for the materials and the dry land storage, it's expensive to keep a boat out of the water for for that long of a period. We were into it for about $40,000. Um, but like I said, the two of us are professionals and it's the hours of our time where the value really is. So overall, the boat is 30 feet long and it's about 12 and a half feet wide, which is really handy. It allows for some narrow, narrow side decks and us to still have quite a wide living space here. We have about 14 feet from the sole to the ceiling in here um, where it's not interrupted by the second floor. There's also quite a bit of space on the roof and uh, we make really good use of it. So I made this door out of fur and purple heart. And uh, of course I was lucky enough to find this port light. So to port right after you enter, we have the head here. We um, moved this wall back about 18 inches to give us some more room in here. and. Uh, Kaylee did a beautiful job. This is mostly her work inside here. This was a livestock watering tank that Kaylee put a lot of hours into and made it into this beautiful little tub that we have here. And this is our composting head. It's a very standard model and it's always worked well for us. There is space for a holding tank and there was a holding tank on board, but it's something that we removed and I've spent a lot of time on boats and I, I don't think there's really a nice way of doing a holding tank on a boat. There's always a residual odor and it's always like a high maintenance item and that's another reason that we went for the composting head. So an interesting feature here is these drawers open up under the side deck, so they're a lot deeper than they appear to be from the outside. So again, just trying to maximize storage everywhere we can. So here we sort of had a weird little corner. We weren't quite sure what to do, but uh, I think this chart table with some storage for shoes and stuff under here worked out well. And uh, under here we have our battery banks. So here there's four six volt batteries that power the whole place. And we also have our electrical panel, 120 and, and 12 volt DC on the same panel. And again, under here, we had a little bit more storage space that uh, was created when we put the stairs up. There were never stairs in this boat originally. Um, but of course, you know, living here full time, going up and down a ladder all the time, it's very inconvenient and this was a good addition. Um, behind the lower part of the staircase is our water heater and our water pump and that back panel is removable to have access to those. In the galley here we were lucky this was the only straight run we had in the whole boat basically so we were able to use pre-manufactured cabinets here and that saved us a lot of time. And again, here we have a, a little bump out into our 2x4 framing just to gain the, the maximum storage possible in a small space. These are all little details that Kaylee learned from the tiny home movement. So here we have our refrigeration. We have a fridge and a freezer. Both of these are powered by 120. So as long as we're by the dock, it's not a problem. We have our propane stove and oven, four burners. 
This whole space under the Ford deck is accessible through here and it's quite a lot of storage. There's enough room here for quite a lot of supplies and we would keep mostly food and provisions up there. Another thing we would keep here is wine. Um, this part of the boat is not insulated and so it's much cooler than uh, the rest of the boat when we're heating. So this acted as our little wine cellar. It's quite nice. So in our plan initially, we were going to have the dinette located under the window, which is where it was before. And I got it in my head that I would build this shape of a bench. I, I like this swoopy shape and I had made some mock-ups and I liked the way it felt. Um, but then we decided to change the layout and so I was kind of attached to this shape. But we then wanted to wrap the bench around and it created all of these compound curves. And um, this was an example of me knowing how to do this but not knowing that it wasn't a good idea because I, I don't know how many hours I have in this bench but it was much much longer than I had anticipated and another thing about building in this style is you have to buy beautiful clear cedar and then machining these strips turns it all into sawdust so I don't think I will build another bench like this but I am quite pleased with the way it came out and again storage being of the utmost, we have storage under both sides of this, as well as storage under the base. And when a diesel heater is going to be installed, I think the vent would be located there with the body of the unit in the middle of this bench. So you would lose no storage to installing a forced air diesel heater here. This is the table that I made of that monkey pod wood. When I bought my sailboat, it came with a storage unit full of treasure, most of which was junk, but there was some treasure and this was the best thing in there. I love this slab of wood and it was brought from Hawaii back here on my current sailboat so it has a special connection. This flooring we found at a scrapyard in a bus. Uh, it took a lot of work to get it looking like this again and we found a stamp on the back of the flooring and the sawmill's phone number was 77. So the flooring is old. <laughs> Kaylee designed this staircase and it, it came together really well. I put this Arbutus handrail on it. We had a big uh, windstorm the winter we were doing this project and this was was fairly fresh wood when I put it on there and even after being well seasoned Arbutus is known to get these big cracks in it but uh, Kaylee had a nice idea of not just filling these cracks with some black epoxy but also of adding some glitter in there and I think it came out really nicely it adds a nice little touch uh, another thing that Kaylee learned from the tiny home movement was to have uh, um, drawers beneath the stairs and this bottom one is the longest of course but uh, we have this um, also filled mostly with food. We prepared some good meals in this space. <laughs> so when we were figuring out this catwalk up here um, we realized it would be nice to have it flare out to give both people in this bed a space to stand onto as they got out of bed. This took me about a week, but it's one of those little details that I think was worth the effort in the end. So this lamination, uh, you know, I, I think the curve worked really nicely in this space and I was quite pleased with the joinery on it. So yeah, one of the best things about living here was having this view to wake up to. Um, out these windows, it's a, a really nice way to wake up in the morning. and. Um, yeah, of course we have the matched drawers on either side, which was more than enough storage. And um, again, there's storage underneath on the inside. There's some hooks on the inside for hanging things. And uh, another nice little thing we figured um, with, with the blackout blinds, they make a, a big difference. And uh, of course a custom curtain rod was needed, but we were able to fabricate that pretty easily and it's worked out well. So up here um, we have a little lounge space, which is nice. In the past, we had a futon up here, which was nice for when guests were over. Um, another thing we did up here was on the second story, we installed double pane windows, which we found made a difference in the winter time, mostly for condensation. It was always warm up here in the winter when we had it warm down below. Now, one thing we were looking at is this space here above the galley that's wide open. Our intention at some point was, was going to be to build a bench here and that would give us an extra space for storage and to sit. And it would also let us install a proper hood ventilation over our stove, which we don't really have excellent ventilation there right now. So that was one way we had thought of maximizing this space even more. So this was the original ladder that came from the first floor to the second, and it was not poorly built, so we decided to keep this one. This is one of the only original remaining parts of the boat that's still in here. 
So that's kind of fun. And uh, on this side, Kaylee installed these neat uh, black iron pipe hangers. Initially, we had thought we might run the chimney from a diesel heater or a wood stove right up here past them, and that would let all of our stuff dry out real quick in the winter. But as it stands, just with the um, radiant oil heater under there, everything dried out there just fine. Last summer we had a really beautiful garden up here. We had grown quite a bit of food and roses and all kinds of really, lots of herbs and we had lots of planters up here. And uh, it, we were a bit concerned about our overall weight. So we made sure our, our planters had a lot of perlite and other light additives in them. Um, but at, what we found actually is that the more weight we put up here, the more stable the boat became, or the more stable it felt, because the, the rate of roll was much lower with a higher center of gravity. We've had eight or ten people up here at a time, and it's never been a problem. It's a really nice space to entertain, and uh, I wish you guys could have seen it with our, our lovely garden. So right now the boat is set up for dockside living. We have 120 volt refrigeration and all of our heat is 120 volt as well. There are batteries on board. They run our bilge pumps and all the other 12 volt lighting and things like that that we have. The water tanks are quite interesting on this boat. It's a scow style hull. It has twin keelsons on the exterior and each one of these keelsons is our water tanks. So they also serve a function as ballast. So because that's the lowest part of the boat, the boat is much more stable that way. And the tanks are fairly large. They hold approximately 140 gallons each. So the capacity for water, we found both of us showering every day, more or less. Um, we had about a month of water on board. So we were very fortunate with finding moorage for this boat. We never really had an issue with it at all. Now I think that that's been so easy for this boat because it's an odd shape and size and it can take up spaces that other boats cannot. See, while it's 12 and a half feet wide, it only draws two feet of water. So typically a boat that's 12 and a half feet wide draws at least five feet of water. So that means in any marina, there's probably a spot that they can't sell to a typical 30 footer or 40 foot boat that this boat might fit into. So um, after our refit, um, everything that we completed in here had to be done to ABYC standards for a boat. So again, because this is sort of a weird in-between boat float home, what we were able to do was register it as a boat. We, so it has nav lights and it had power at the time, the things that it needed to be registered as a boat and insured as a boat. And so we were able to keep this in a, in a place where a normal float home would not be allowed. And then when we brought it back down this way, float homes are allowed in this district. But to ensure it's a float home, we actually had to remove our motor. So it is nice to be able to switch back and forth like that if needs be. Some challenges about living aboard in general, I think, is that uh, you have to become a minimalist and I think that's a challenge, but it's also a very good and noble pursuit. Um, I, I think that when you have the amount of things that you actually need and not the amount of things that you've acquired over the years for one reason or another, you are more able to be truly happy and less likely to be weighed down by earthly possessions. And I think that's a great thing. So one thing I really love about building a boat builder is um, we, we put our heart and our work into these objects and then you let them go and they go off and they live a life and, and they sail and they travel and they are, you know, they're good to their owners and they weather the storm and so it's time now for, for this houseboat to go on to the next place and for somebody else to enjoy it and for it to continue its life. So the houseboat packs is for sale. And uh, it is on the market now. It's time for a new stage for Kaylee and I. And um, this boat will be available to make somebody else happy and give somebody else a home. So that's a nice feeling as well. Subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and please share this video if you liked it. You can also follow Jason on Instagram at Wood and Wind. And the link to the listing for his boat will also be in the description of the video. Thanks for watching.